My name is Luis Daluz. I am an assistant professor of surgery at the University of Toronto and a staff physician of the Department of Surgery at Sunnybrook Health Sciences Centre in Toronto, Canada. I would like to say thanks to Luis for electing my trial as one of the 2020 EAST Multicenter trials. The first two trials will assess the early administration of concentrates of clotting factors for severely bleeding trauma patients in eight level one trauma centers in Canada. Severely bleeding trauma patients may develop an early coagulopathy known as acute trauma coagulopathy. Bleeding coupled with this coagulopathy is the leading cause of in-hospital mortality in trauma. The acute trauma coagulopathy is multifactorial and characterized by an imbalance of the complex interplay in procoagulant, anticoagulant, and fibrinolytic pathways and by platelet and endothelial dysfunction. Treatment of hemorrhage in trauma patients requires several steps that should happen in a coordinated fashion. The source of bleeding should be identified and procedures should be adopted to minimize or stop the bleeding. Bleeding patients should be resuscitated via a massive hemorrhage protocol, usually with a fixed and balanced ratio, with a hemostatic component. Red blood cells, plasma, and platelets should be transfused, respecting a ratio of 2 to 1 to 1 or 1 to 1 to 1. And to treat the acute trauma coagulopathy, replacement of clotting factors should happen. Until recently, clinicians were used to transfuse plasma, platelets, and cryo precipitate to replace these clotting factors. However, recent evidence has demonstrated that prothrombin complex concentrate, a concentrate of the clotting factors 2, 7, 9, and 10, and fibrinogen concentrate, a purified human-derived concentrate of fibrinogen, have been used in trauma and other surgical settings, especially in European countries. Why we believe that the first two trials should be conducted? First, because the optimal method of resuscitation is not totally defined. There is also preliminary data that suggests that the use of both drugs reverses the acute trauma coagulopathy and decreases the volume of blood products transfused. In addition, safety and efficacy of using these drugs have not been assessed in a large randomized controlled trial. We believe that using both drugs in bleeding trauma patients, we will achieve a reduction of blood products transfusion, decreasing over resuscitation. It may also reduce AB plasma transfusion and have the potential to restore these drugs in trauma rooms or extend their use in the pre-hospital setting, including austere environments. This will be a prospective, multi-center, randomized, parallel control, superiority, and pragmatic study comparing use of clotting factor concentrates with a standard massive hemorrhage protocol in severely bleeding trauma patients. We will include adult trauma patients who are bleeding and in whom a massive hemorrhage protocol is activated. Patients will be excluded if they have received more than two units of blood prior to the protocol activation, more than three hours post-injury, uh, have penetrating brain injury with a Glasgow coma scale of three, uh, have been using anticoagulants, are known to have a bleeding disorder, are pregnant, or refuse blood projects. The primary endpoint will be to demonstrate superiority with respect to the composite number of all allogenic blood products units transfused within 24 hours after admission. The secondary endpoint will be to demonstrate non-inferiority for the total number of RBC units transfused within 24 hours as surrogate for the degree of hemorrhage control. We will include also other exploratory endpoints such as clinical, laboratory, and safety endpoints as well. At the study flow graph, we see that the injury happens, patient is admitted to the trauma bay, the MHP is activated, the eligibility criteria is verified, and the patient is randomized. On the left side, the intervention group will receive four RBC units, four grams of FC, and 2,000 units of PCC. The second pack will contain four units of RBCs, plus both drugs, as in pack one, added one dose of platelets, which corresponds to four units. From the third pack on, if the MHP is still active, the site will move to their local protocol, which will be a minimum of 2 to 1 to 1 ratio. 
on the opposite side, the control group, the first MHP pack will contain four RBC units, four units of plasma. The second pack will contain four RBC units, four units of plasma, and one dose of platelets. From the third pack on, if the MHP is still active, the pack will respect the minimum 2 to 1 to 1 in each site. When the MHP is terminated, the participating site will switch to a lab-guided transfusion or transfusion guided by a viscoelastic method, such as ROTAM, depending on each site standards. This trial will have an adaptive design. This is because the variability of the primary outcome is very large and the effect sizes are uncertain. So we will have a pilot phase involving 120 patients. We'll do an interim analysis to assess the power and sample size or other design modifications if needed, and then progress with patient involvement. Thank you very much again. I'm happy to answer any questions through my email listed in this presentation.